Uh, hello, Michael McHenry from the aptly named McHenry Group in yeah. beautiful Salt Lake City. Uh, it is nice to see you. Yeah, likewise, Brett. Always a pleasure to, uh, to get on with you and just talk about, I think, the good stuff and the opportunities taking place, I think, inside and, and, and outside of our restaurants and the, and the beloved industry that, uh, that we all participate in. The, the opportunities, I've always liked that, that way of saying problems. Uh, it's, it's something lighter about it. It seems more, more um, maybe more attainable or the ability to accomplish, you know, hard things when you look at them with a more positive, I think, outlook and, and, uh, and tone for sure. I'll tell you, Brett, we spent very little time on what it used to be. And we got laser focused on what we have direct control over, um, which is our current state. And we are thoughtful operators. We're experiential operators. That means the Henry Group is all about uh, experiential dining, about really being, um, you know, a progressive restaurant group that our businesses are laser focused, I think, on prioritizing all stakeholders within our community. And so that comes with being thoughtful during these times. And I think it's another reason why we have a suburban casual, you know, restaurant here being Oak that um, our seating capacity is less than 50% of what it used to be. Um, however, we've incorporated several kind of off-premise focuses and, and also incorporated a, a, a virtual only brand that we could talk a little bit more about. But we just, re we just uh, realized double digit growth over prior year in the month of October with a dining room capacity that's 50% of what it once was. So is a lot of that, but what is that? Is that new off-premise things or is that more customers coming because you're a year older and you've established yourself more. Or so more I'll tell you that, that we're actually um, seeing uh, the, the amount of covers that were consistent with the full dining room versus prior year. So we've gotten better at how we're turning tables. Um, we've gotten better at how we can, can compress some of our menus, got more intentional there, which allowed us to be more efficient. Um, and so our table times and table turns are far more efficient than they once were. Um, but there's no question that this, new this new part in curbside and delivery that was i want to say pretty much non-existent pre-covid we pivoted to immediately um and by mid-march we we were already um on pace for a robust like uh off-premise business and so no question that that is making up about 40% of our revenue mix in a casual that used to be less than 10%. So we're seeing that taking place. And then one of the big one, I think one of the biggest contributors to that success is, is Southside Pizza Co. Um, and so we ended up uh, taking on the ingredient mix, the supply chain, the operations, um, and all the fixed overheads that were associated with it. And we actually launched a digital only, a pizza and chicken wing concept out of an independent, you know, here in a suburb of Salt Lake City. And uh, Southside Pizza Co., it's got five different varieties of wings. It's got eight different pizzas. Um, however, the brand itself is focused on a younger a demographic, kind of millennial and younger demographic. We've created a new kind of price point association with it. Um, we've also been able to, to offer this, when I say price point, we've been able to offer this more economically to the marketplace because many of the fixed costs are already being absorbed uh, in our main business, which is which is Oakwood Fire Kitchen. And um, that is a, a big part of our pivot, you know, and under these conditions, you hear a lot about how, how brands are innovating or how people want to innovate or how they're pivoting or what results they're yielding. And then you hear those that are actually taking on these opportunities and they're taking them to market. And um, that's been a big contributor to our success during this time is becoming multifaceted and not only maximizing what we have in terms of our dining room square footage, but how we're maximizing our productivity, supply chain, and, and, uh, and labor investment in our kitchens and the virtual you know, opportunity and, and brand was a big one for us. So what advice do you have for operators? You have three things going on at Oakwood Fire, <laughs> Oakwood Fire Kitchen, Oakwood Fire Grill. What's Oak, it called? Oakwood Fire Kitchen. Oakwood, Oakwood Fire. Fire Kitchen. You have table service, customers who want to come in and be treated like, you know, full service thing. And then you have, you have curbside and takeout, and then you have a virtual brand. How do you manage that all in the kitchen? 
Yeah, so yeah, great, great, um, great question. So here, here's what's interesting. Our POS systems are pretty multifaceted. If you have a current state POS system, you know, such as a, as a toast operating system or, you know, a clover based system, um, they're kind of out in front. There's, there's resources and ways to direct that traffic. Um, but what we found is uh, through a variety of just KDSs, you know, kitchen display screens and creating separation. So for instance, at Oak, we are, are as it prints up, we have our in-house dine-in and takeout and off-premise that's associated with our Oak business. And then we have our South Side business and the South Side business actually prints in a different color. So when it hits those main lines, um, and because we've cross utilized the same ingredients, just a different component or different structure within each of those menus, um, it's just allowed us to be operationally efficient. And then we've separated all of the branding. And so um, we have uh, you know, different branding, different containers, um, different packaging to support each of those brands. And so as those items uh, are on their way to Expo, they're just then expedited into the additional packaging and, and uh, they're on their way. So, so you, you have the same cooks working on all three uh, same service cook, styles. Same, same cook, same, same supply chain. Yep. The well, that's same, cool. Yeah, it's just, it just becomes a step. It just becomes a step in the operation. And when you think about that, it's, it's you know, line cooks and, and, and your team members, your chefs, et cetera, that are taking place. This is just an added step to the function. Um, and what we found is it's created a lot of stability. And under these conditions, you know, if we were looking at this eight to 10 months ago, right under these conditions, you'd get, you know, a culture going like, wait a minute, I don't want to do more. Or, hey, this is, this is just more work for me. And what we're finding under these conditions, the team that's on board with you that's leaned in, they see this as opportunity. They see this as stability. They see this as, as owners not just trying to fill their pockets, but creating opportunities uh, to stay in business. And so we're finding that the pandemic is also providing, I think, uh, unique ways to build stronger culture and better buy-in and stability, um, which also translates to, I think, stronger profitability under some circumstances. And possibly a, a more close-knit team. Without question. Um, I feel like, you know, here we were early March uh, across uh, the McHenry Group fold of restaurants. We needed 30 to 40 new team members the first week of, of March, what we were on trend with. And by the third, you know, week to last week of March, we had furloughed, laid off, or, you know, had devastating loss to our team member base of over 65%. You know, I would say two thirds at that point. That's a drastic change. And then we pivoted, we got serious about our current state. We made a lot of big moves, um, a lot of unknowing news, moves that had risk, but we knew we wanted to be in business and we felt confident that we could do it in a healthy and appropriate way to now we have a bigger team than we had pre pandemic. And I think our culture is stronger and more bought in uh, today than ever before for the very you know, reason that you bring that up that that the people that are on board that are working want to truly be here. Um, because under these conditions, it's just harder than it's ever been. Now just imagine getting through these conditions, everybody gets vaccinated or whatever. And then after a while, the economy turns around. Can you imagine how much fun that's gonna be? You know, it's, um, it, it's an interesting thing when you think about it, Brett, because something that I've been really um, like, just driving home with our teams, with our partners, you know, with our investment community is that I feel like that, that like current relevance is our current state profitability. And I know that sounds interesting to say, because, you know, if I was talking to a group of CFOs right now, they probably wouldn't agree with me. But when I talk about overall experience and creating equity within your communities, you know, restaurants and bars, good restaurants and bars or a place of normalcy and stability under times of crisis. And then all of a sudden, you don't know how to approach them because dining rooms are closed or how do I get that experience? And when, you, when it's difficult or you maybe can no longer count on your neighborhood restaurant or your neighborhood bar for that place of kind of stability and normalcy under tough times, you know, you're, that's kind of removed. From the, from the very neighborhood that you love and that, that you contend for. And so the message that we're driving home is, is create access, create uh, offer value, um, 
you know, increase consumer confidence is through sharing the very things that we're doing. You know, we launched the Smaller, Better, Safer initiative pre, pre heavy mandates to build that consumer confidence and let people know that we are that place of stability for you within your community. And I feel like that's really contributed, Brett, to what we're doing, which is, which is being laser focused with resource in mind and also our monetary uh, investment on creating and staying relevant within our communities through our promotion and just sharing, I think, the healthy and, and, uh, and the good reasons why to support your neighborhood restaurants. And that's been a big one for us. You know, not only team, but community and business, that's really allowed us the opportunity to, to I think, to stay relevant and, and be the place that our communities can count on during these times. Great. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, well, Michael McHenry, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me and for doing your part to make Salt Lake City a better place and for making the restaurant community a better community. And uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Well, Brett, it's, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for sharing the good stuff, you know, that's taking place in, in, uh, in our dining communities across the country and specifically uh, showing your interest and in, in support in what we're doing here in Salt Lake City. Um, you know, we, we continue to feel like we're, we're progressing and, and uh, want to see our, our food and, and, and bar community continue to, to be one that rises on a national level. So we appreciate uh, your support. And, and Brett, it's been great to build this relationship and friendship with you as well. A lot of respect for you, my friend. And likewise. Thank you a lot. Yeah. Many cheers. Take care.